so my name is Carl Bujeya. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about my brushless PCB model project. So just a little introduction about myself. Um, I graduated in electronics engineering in 2016. Um, right after graduation, um, I decided um, uh, with my friend to start a drone startup. Um, we're designing a small um, coaxial drone um, and we are funding it out of our personal money. Um, so eventually, after a few months, we failed to um, develop a prototype, but we learned a lot. Um, now I'm working as an embedded systems engineer in the automotive industry. I mainly do software. And in my free time, I like to build um, robots and also things that can eventually make them smaller and cheaper. So my idea behind my PCB motor project um, came from me trying to build a small and compact drone. Um, anyone um, who likes drones is probably familiar with the setup. Um, so a drone is basically made up from a battery, propellers, brushless motors, ESCs, and a main controller. Um, so my idea was to try and combine these modules into one system. So basically you have everything soldered onto one PCB. So we have all the electronics um, on one PCB. Um, so the question is how can you integrate a motor with a PCB? And that's how I came up with the PCB stator. Basically you have windings inside the PCB itself um, that can form the motor itself. So then you can combine a custom rotor with it um, inside a bearing. And the obvious step would then be combine the propeller with the rotor. So obviously the first and last two, two steps are not that hard um, to do and are feasible. The problem was um, with the PCB stator. So this will obviously make the drone much cheaper and easier to assemble. Um, however, there were, there were quite a number of unknowns. Um, to be honest, I wasn't quite sure that this was going to work. Um, I mean, it was, it, it, I could make it um, on a large scale, but um, to fit on a tiny drone, um, I wasn't so confident. But after a few months sitting on the idea, I decided to try it out. Um, sort of um, the worst um, case that could happen uh, was that it will be too inefficient and become super hot. Um, so this, is, this was my first PCB motor prototype. It actually worked quite nice. Um, so as I said, um, I challenged myself um, to make it uh, the same diameter as other micro brushless motors. Um, and I managed to make it in a 16 millimeter diameter and it weighs 1.5 grams. So I have able to make it this small by having four layers. As you can see, those are the different layers. Um, and I also used a four mil track width and clearance. Um, so I was able to fit around 40 turns per coil. As you can see from the image, is a six pole um, mode stator, sorry. And uh, it's connected in a star configuration. Um, it draws around 220 milliamps with a five volt supply. And it's going up to 70 degrees Celsius, which is quite nice. Um, the rotor um, was 3D printed. Um, I have designed two main versions, one with a metallic shaft and the other, the other one with a, that, that you're seeing in the slide is, a, is with a plastic um, snap hook shaft, so which basically um, reduces the process to a three step. Just put the magnets inside the rotor, um, put the bearing inside the PCB and then snap the two parts together. I have done a lot of torque experiments. Um, so um, basically the static torque of this motor is around 0 0.9 gram centimeter. Um, this is obviously um, not a lot. Brushless motors are um, well known for um, higher speed applications than torque applications. Um, so um, I did not expect this um, to have a high torque given that it also has an air core. So it doesn't have an iron core inside it. So it will obviously perform much worse. Um, but I have also, I, I have also managed to um, place a ferrite sheet underneath the PCB stator, um, which basically um, re reflected the magnetic field, so it enhances it. Um, and this increased it to 1.5 gram centimeter 
but it has also increased the temperature from 70 to 90 degrees Celsius. I'm sorry, I'm not um, that familiar with Fahrenheit. Uh, um, I have spent a lot of time designing um, the ESC for this motor. Um, my first approach was to try and make a sensorless, brushless motor ESC. So um, this is uh, the same ESC that, that most um, quadcopters or drones use. Um, but I was not able to do it. Um, I had to scratch the idea because the back EMF generated on the windings were too weak. Um, my guess it is that it's um, the coupling between the layers are not that efficient to generate a current on them. So basically, I could not determine the next switching points of the commutation. So then I decided to go for plan B and for now just use a whole sensor. Um, so this simplified the algorithm a lot um, when compared to the other um, algorithm that I was using. Um, but it also was a little, the sensor was a little more pricier, obviously. So this is the PCB uh, that has my ESC and, uh, and the original brushless motor design. I was able to fit all the electronics in an 8 millimeter by 40 millimeter area by soldering both parts on the, on both, sorry, the components on both sides of the PCB. And I also had to use some very tiny components. Uh, I have it here, me, I have it here with me on stage. Uh, I thought I could power it up for you. So it's sort of ramping up. Well, that's it, basically. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so my plan is um, to actually first measure the maximum speed this motor, this motor can achieve. Uh, I haven't done that because I finished uh, this PCB uh, two weeks ago, so I didn't have much time. Uh, I also want to test different configurations like a nine pole stator and the delta um, configuration, uh, which will hopefully um, improve the dynamic torque uh, of the motor and will enable me to put this thing on a drone. Um, I also challenge myself to try and make it smaller. Um, so last week I received my new prototype, uh, which, uh, is on a six layer PCB board. So I was able to use the same um, four mil track width and clearance, um, but reduce the number of turns per layer. So that's why um, it enabled me to make it in half the area. So it has an 11 millimeter diameter now. Um, so that's it basically. Um, this idea um, also, um, sort of gave me other ideas. Um, I have designed a linear PCB motor, uh, which is um, the one at the bottom. I have also um, tried um, making it on a flexible PCB, uh, which is very cool. Um, I highly suggest you check it out because I, I was quite amazed how good this works. So, so my goal is to eventually um, start turning these motors into the robots itself. So imagine having um, a, robo a, PCB for, uh, a robot with a PCB that does um, the processing for the robot and can also um, actuate the robot itself. So I, I mean, I find that very, very exciting. So thanks for listening. I hope you liked my project. <laughs>